Let's take our first major step to leveling up our coding skills by learning how to use variables. They are a key part of what makes any programming language powerful and flexible. The word variable comes from combining the words very, meaning change, and able, can, which perfectly describes what it is. A variable is something that is able to vary, or in other words, something that can change. In programming, a variable is like a package that holds a piece of information. It can hold a tiny piece of information like an envelope or a lot of information like a box. Either way you think about it, some kind of information is stored inside and it is labeled with a name. We can recall the information at any time by using the name on the label, and we can change the information as much as we want and store the new information under the same label. And that's why we call it a variable. We use variables to keep track of things that need to be flexible in our programs, like a player's score, the X and Y coordinates of a character, or the current level of a game. Variables are important because they allow us to save and change this information while the program is running, not just between runs like we have been doing. Before we open up Pico 8, there's one more thing I want to clarify. So far in this course, I've been using the word information. But now that we're talking about variables, I should really be more specific and say data instead. And you might think those two words mean the same thing, but in many fields, not just programming, there is an important difference. Let me explain. If I show you a list of numbers like this, that's all they are, just a list of numbers. By themselves, they have no meaning. That's what data is, raw numbers, text, or facts. But when I give this data context, and tell you that it is the number of enemies you encounter as time goes on in a game, suddenly this data becomes information, and we can draw it on a graph, and we can understand the meaning behind these numbers, that this game gets harder the more you play it. A computer handles data, and it doesn't understand what that data is for. It doesn't care. It's up to us to remember, use, and display the data as information that players can understand and enjoy. Therefore, it's very important that we label the data by naming the variables in a way that reminds us of the meaning and context that the data represents. So I could label this list of numbers as enemies over time. And that would be a good variable name that tells me and others reading my code what this data means. So keep that in mind while we head over to Pico8 and learn more about variables and the different types of data that we can keep track of. Let's open up a blank game and start by clearing the screen and printing the classic Hello World again. Right now the text is hard-coded in, meaning we can only change it by exiting the program, changing the text here, and running it again. If we want to be able to change the text while the game is running, we need to use a variable here instead. To create a variable in Pico8, simply type in any letter or word that will act as the variable's name, then an equal sign, and now whatever we put after this equal sign will be stored inside of this variable. So let's write hello world here with quotation marks and let's name this variable something more appropriate to give meaning to this data. Since this is the text I want to print, I'll just name it text. Now we have a variable named text, and it is holding the data hello world. After this line of code is run, we can retrieve the data just by using the variable name, text. So now in print, we can erase the hard-coded hello world and replace it with our variable text, no quotation marks. We can run the program now, and it works just like it did before, but now it is printing from our stored data. And anywhere after even this line of code, the data hello world is still saved inside of our variable text. Now let's use this variable for its main purpose, of being changeable. After we print the text once, I'm going to change the data to say sun. Then we can print text the exact same way again and run it. And now we see two lines being printed, hello world and hello sun. Even though in our code, we are printing the exact same variable. And we can change the variable as many times as we want. 
and print it yet again. We used a single variable, but printed three different lines of text to the screen. All right, now that you've seen a variable in action, let's talk data types. Data types are the different kinds of values that variables can hold. The data type we have created here, by using quotation marks, is called a string. Have you ever had or made a bracelet with your name on it? You take an actual string and you place beads on it one letter at a time. The beads don't have to be letters, right? They could be symbols or even digits. And that's true of our strings here too. If you want to space out words on your bracelet string, then you can use empty beads, right? Well, in code, that's what spaces are. And each space is a character that Pico8 will print just like any other character. Check this out. So a string is a type of data that is a sequence of characters between quotation marks. And that's it, as far as the computer is concerned. So our variable text is simply remembering to hold an H followed by an E, then an L, and another L, an O, a space, and so on. Just a sequence of characters like beads on a string, and it has no further meaning than that. On the other hand, the word print does have meaning, and Pico8 turns it green to show that it recognizes this word and that it will do something special when it reads it. So what if we print the word print? As soon as I put print inside of quotation marks, the letters turn blue, not green, because Pico8 no longer sees it as a function name. It's now just a string, with a P followed by an R, and so on. Meaningless raw data, just a sequence of characters. The next data type is a number. But not like this. This is still a string. Let's make a new variable with the name of num, short for number and it equals the actual number six. And there's an important difference between these two lines of code. They are two different data types. The first one is a string, the second is a number. If we add more digits like five, four, three to both variables, Pico8 understands this number as 6,543, but it only sees this string as the character six, followed by a five, followed by a four, and ending in a three. So what else is different? Well, we can do math with numbers. And I know that sentence is so simple, it sounds very obvious, but I'm actually saying something specific here, which is we can perform arithmetic, addition, subtraction, multiplication, division, on data the computer recognizes as a number data type. So we can do math with numbers. This data type has more meaning than just being a symbol of the number six. It is the number six and understood to be six units more than zero. The units don't matter. That's up to us to give more meaning to this number, like six points or six minutes or level six in our game. So let's do some math and see what happens when I add three to both of these sixes. But before we run this, Make a prediction to check if you are understanding how the computer is reading this code. Being able to read code the way a computer does is just as important as being able to write code. So what do you think will happen when we print the variable text, six plus three, and also print the variable num, six plus three? We get six plus three and nine. If you predicted something else, you might want to go back a few minutes and rewatch exactly what I said about strings and numbers again to double check if you missed something. If you got it right, then let's do some more math with variables. Just like we added two numbers together and saved it to a variable, we can also add two variables together as long as they are numbers. So let's rename this num1 and it will be just six. Then let's create a num2 variable and set it to 10. Notice that the digits one and two here are gray, showing that it knows that this is part of the variable name. So we can use digits in variable names, but a variable name cannot be only digits. It will think we are trying to write a number and color it blue, and this causes an error. So we have variable names num1 and num2, and then I'll make another variable that will be the result 
of doing math with these two variables. So result equals num1 plus num2. And instead of printing num, which we don't have anymore, we print result. And let's see what happens. 16. Nice. What if we subtract them instead? Negative 4. Awesome. So variables can be negative numbers. How about we multiply them? We use the asterisk symbol for that. Usually shift plus the number 8 on most keyboards. Run it, and we get 60. Perfect. And now let's divide them. Use a slash for division. Run it, and we get 0 0.6. Cool, so variables can also be decimals. There is a lot more to learn about numbers, but we'll get into it later. For now, all you need to know is that a number is a specific data type, and we can store positive numbers, negative numbers, and decimals in variables, and we can change the number data with math. Let me clean up this code before we move on. All right, the third data type is a Boolean. And if you've never coded before, then this word may be completely new to you. It comes from an English mathematician named George Boole. And the nickname of a Boolean is just Bool, without an E. A Boolean is a type of data that has only two possible values, true or false. Booleans are great for representing whether the answer to a question is yes or no, such as is the player pressing the X button? True or false? Or it can represent something in your game being on or off. Like, does the player have their power up turned on right now? True or false? Or it can represent doors in your game being opened or closed. Or chests being locked or unlocked. I could keep going with many more examples, but I think you get the idea of how useful it is to have a data type that simply remembers true or false. To see it in action, we can use our number variables like this. Bool, which can be named anything by the way, naming these text, num, and bool doesn't make them their data types. I've named them this way only to help you remember what data types the variables are holding. So this variable, named bool, is set to num double equals 6. This double equal sign compares what is on the left with what is on the right and checks to see if they are the same. If they are, then the result will be true, and true will be saved as a boolean to our variable named bool. If they are not the same, then bool will be saved as false. Let's make sure we print bool, then run it and see. Okay, that's true. Num is equal to 6. Now let's change it and compare our num with 6 as a string this time. What do you think? Will the computer say that they are the same and print true, or different and print false? False, because it recognizes the different data types. Now there are even more data types, but since this is just an introduction to variables, we aren't going to go into detail about the more complicated data types until later, where we will break down each one in its own video. But I do want to show you how variables can make your code easier to manage, if you did any of the side quests from our last video, then you probably had many lines of print and used a lot of different numbers for x and y coordinates, as well as colors. But now that we can use variables to save those numbers and label them, it can make code easier to read and change. For example, let's tell this line to print at 30x and 40y, and in red, color number 8. If I want to change these numbers later, I have to find this line exactly, remember what the order of each number represents, and then change them right here. But now we can replace these hard-coded numbers with variables instead. Up at the top, let's create a variable named x, and that will be 30. Then another variable for y, which is 40. And another variable for color, it's common to use the letter c for that, which we want it to be 8. Now we can come back down to this print and replace the numbers with our variable names, x, y, and c. Run it, and that works. And now it's not just easier to read this line of code, but it's also easier to quickly look at the top and change the exact variables I want to change with the names of the variables reminding me what the numbers represent. How easy was that? 
All right, I think that's all you need to know right now. Even though I'm tempted to tell you more rules and suggested formatting about variables, like different ways of naming them, but actually I think you'll learn better if you're allowed to explore and discover what works and what doesn't work. The important thing is, explore within the boundary of what you know so far, and go for mastering these new skills. If you bump into an error, that's great. See if you have the knowledge to figure out why something broke, and if you can't figure it out, then just ask. Share the code, tell us what you thought it should do, and tell us what actually happened, or the exact error that occurred. You can press Ctrl C after getting an error to easily copy the full error message. We'll help you understand what happened in the comments. So go play, explore, and discover what you can. If you're not sure how to start practicing using variables, then go back to the side quests of the last lesson. You can redo them, but with variables this time, or tackle the ones you didn't do using variables to help make those tasks easier. Have fun! But before you go, let's just take a moment to thank our supporters on Coffee. Without them, I wouldn't be able to offer this course for free, so we appreciate all the support that has been given so far. And if you can, consider joining their ranks as supporters of this course and our educational website, nerdyteachers.com.